So today we're going to talk about um, the golden calf of Christianity, which is Calvinism. If you don't know what Calvinism is, don't worry too much about it. Um, you know, it's got this whole tulip principle, and then there's different extremes of Calvinism, and don't really worry about that. The main idea here is uh, predestination that we're going to look at. Um, is someone destined to be saved? And um, to where there's nothing they can do. It's called irresistible grace. Um, and uh, so then, obviously, someone who falls away would have been someone who was never saved in the first place. Um, I mean, there's obvious um, obvious problems with, with, with such a view, but not really that important. Because here's the thing. Whenever you start talking about this kind of stuff, um, <laughs> you, you start having, like, these intellectual elitists. So you'll have these people who, like, they don't find it funny. Oh, we, we don't we don't joke about Calvin. We don't joke about Calvinism. It's like, well, <laughs> like it's it's not that big of a deal. But you know, you have these 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 really really not joking Christians who they divide themselves into these two camps: Armenians and Calvins. And Armenians of, are of course the heretics, usually because of straw man fallacies. And Calvin Calvinists are 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 you know, and it's like. Okay, all right. So then, you know, you can't joke about it. Everybody gets all serious. And then, like, people get seriously offended. They're all, you don't believe in Calvinism? You know, it's like, okay. <laughs> so you have these, ooh, well, la-di-da, you, you believe in Calvinism. Well, good for you. Here's the thing about all this, okay? Whenever you're talking about predestination or whatever, it doesn't really matter. Because here's the thing. If people really are predestined to be saved, there's no way you could know who was predestined and who wasn't predestined. Because let's say, for instance, they got saved and then fell away, which the Calvinists would then say, well, they were never really saved. But then what happens if they actually do get saved before the end? Like, you know, oh, tricked you. Uh, you know, and, and also, you know, there's the issue of, you know, some, sometimes there's things from God's perspective that we don't understand from God's perspective, and that's okay. It really doesn't matter. Then let's also look at this. If you don't believe in Calvinism, if you don't believe in predestination, that doesn't make you not saved. It, does, it doesn't make you not saved. It doesn't affect uh, your ability to tell people about Jesus. It doesn't affect your ability to uh, love God. I mean, it's not one of those things where he said, thou shalt believe in predestination. So it's, it's kind of a moot point, you know. And so it's like we, if some people get so upset and, and bent out of shape because of their, their, their doctrine. That's it. They don't like you touching their doctrine because they've already decided what to believe and nothing's ever going to, to, to dissuade them. And it's like, okay, like, I just don't really think it's that big of a deal. Like, I, as a fellow believer, don't have to persuade you or dissuade you from Calvinism. And, you know, you, as a Calvinist, don't have to – look at it like this. I mean, also, if, Cal, if Calvinism is, is, is real, and that means that, you know – wouldn't I be predestined to not believe in Calvinism? <laughs> so you have this, you have this kind of a bit of a. Now, obviously, you know, okay, there's going to be that person who watches this and leaves an angry comment. You misquoted Calvinism. Do, do, do. Calm down, calm down. Okay, we can all joke first off, and second off, it's not that big of a deal. Like you, you don't have to go to war every single time that somebody says something that slightly offends you. Like if this, if this offends you, look, I'm really sorry. I'm just trying to make light of it. Move on with your day and go do something productive. Maybe. Maybe you shouldn't be sitting online, uh, you know, policing every Christian post and making sure that Calvinism is inherent in everything. It's like, okay. <laughs> but anyways, um, so, you know, I, I, I'm really not a big fan of the whole um, intellectual elitist thing. You know, oh, I have complete understanding. M my, the way I see it is foolproof. Obviously, I'm right. You know, it's like, okay, all right, calm down. Now, obviously, I'm not talking about relativism, but... I mean, still, there is a, a wide majority of, of, of things about God that we just really can't understand. I mean, even Paul talks about this when he's, now, obviously, I'm taking this a little bit out of context, but it's, the lesson still applies when he says, we, we just see through a, a mirror dimly, you know. And obviously, once again, he's talking about other things, but that kind of goes for a lot of things. Like Isaiah says, you know, you, my ways are, are, are they're, they're up here, and your ways are down here. You're not understanding things. I mean, even if you look at Habakkuk, he says, God, I, I don't understand how you're using such an evil people as Babylon to, uh, to, to do anything here. I just, I just don't get that. You know, and then God explains it to him and everything. He says, "Look, even even if even if the trees stop producing and the harvest fell, look, I'm still going to keep keep hoping in you." And so there's there's really a lot of a lot of things there. But then there's ob the obvious point that the Bible is not conclusive for Calvinism. So I mean that that is something that kind of needs to be 
pointed out. Now, obviously, um, Arianism has oftentimes gotten equated with other um, heretical beliefs, which is not inherent. Um, if you want more about that, it's um, you can look at a book called uh, Armenian Theology by Olson. That's who it's by. It's by Olson. Um, so, you know, it, it's not really something that... Um, but then, once again, let's say you and I never agree on Calvinism or whatnot. It, it, it doesn't matter. It really doesn't matter. Like, it just it just doesn't matter. Um, you know, if, if we can have enough room for racial diversity, for, um, you know, gender diversity, if by having both male and female in the church, I'm not talking about other things um, if we can if we can make room for you know uh, different styles of music if we can make room for I think we can make room for one person believing in preordination and the other person not believing in preordination I'm pretty sure we can do that um, the problem with Calvinism is that oftentimes people kind of especially people who don't agree with Calvinism kind of take it to an extremism you know what I mean like um, basically they 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 push it to a to a logical extreme and then kind of condemn everyone who believes in Calvinism as as that and you know probably not the best way to approach things but then also sometimes people who are Calvinists do this too um, I actually have talked to people personally that they say there's no reason in um, evangelizing because you know they're just uh, destined to believe or not believe and it's like well that's not really Calvinism. That's definitely not biblical. So, anyways, so just be careful of that. Just because you know somebody who believes in preordination doesn't mean that they go to the extremes of you know not not witnessing and that kind of stuff. So there is. I mean, obviously, there. Once again, I I'll, I said this before. That there is a, a wide diversity of Calvinism. It's not like I'm a Calvinist and so I don't agree disagree with any other Calvinist on any point. It's not like that. So okay. Um, the, the the big problem that – well, one of the big problems that I have with Calvinism, besides the fact that it seems to me to go against what the Bible is talking about, is um, – I mean, here's what I mean by going against what the Bible says. Okay, so for instance, um, you know, Hebrews talks about the person who is saved and then falls away. It clearly talks about it. And so what I've heard a lot of Calvinists say is, well, it's a hypothetical situation. It couldn't really happen. Then what's the point of warning people against falling away if they can't actually fall away? Like that just doesn't make sense. When you take the book of Hebrews, it's like, well, this this doesn't really this none of this seems to fit with Calvinist theology. And, you know, this is something that I've studied for a long time, the book of Hebrews. I studied it for years on end, and I just don't see a way around the Calvinist issue. Um, and that's just one book. I mean I could I could say other books, but um, but then also on the flip side of that, there's some things in the Bible that seem to talk very much so about preordination. For instance, in Exodus it talks about the Pharaoh who um, God hardened his heart. Now, obviously, it also says in other places that he hardened his heart. So, I mean, yes, absolutely, I'm not, I'm not agreeing with Calvinism, but I'm saying there is, there is obviously that that basis there. Or Jeremiah, where he says, you know, you go and prophesy to these people, but they're not going to listen. So, oh, well, that's encouraging. So, anyways, it, Calvinism, in my opinion, doesn't seem to fit the whole picture of the Bible. It uh, makes use of some verses. Uh, but in, in other ways, it just kind of discredits what the Bible says, and it, it discredits the warnings and the, and the extremism there. And also, I think that another thing with Calvinism is, as church leaders, we oftentimes do something like this. Well, they were never really saved. Oh, well, I'm not even going to try because they're just, you know what I mean? And we get kind of this idea where a prejudgment on our end, where we start saying, you know, okay, because I believe in Calvinism, I know that that person will never be saved. I know that, you know, and whereas it gives some comfort with when somebody betrays you, it doesn't give a whole lot of encouragement and motivation to uh, to love people. And obviously, um, if you've been in ministry, you, you know the hang-up there, and, and different people have seen different ways around it. And once again, I'm not trying to tell you that you have to disbelieve Calvinism. That's, that's what something that people don't understand who believe in Calvinism. <laughs> not everybody's trying to dissuade you from believing in Calvinism. You can believe it all you want. I'm just simply saying why I don't believe it. And that's totally fine. Like I can believe in some, in Arminianism, and and you can believe in Calvinism, and, and we can all be okay. Really, it's okay. I'm not trying to persuade you. Um, and uh, there's another thing that that happens too often in the whole Calvinism debate. I am unwilling to listen to your views and your theories because they don't match my own. It's like okay, calm down there, buddy. 
So anyways, um, if Calvinism is real and preordination, we have a kind of problem with God authoring evil and enforcing evil. See, that would mean that God created some for the purpose of sinning and going to hell. And no matter how much rhetoric you, you, you spin, it comes down to this. So God created some people for the purpose of going to hell. He created some people for the purpose of sinning. When it says, for God so loved the world, it's like, well, not really the world, just, you know, the elite, the intellectuals. And it kind of gives this idea that, you know, I, a lot of the time that I see churches who believe in Calvinism, they have this superior, superiority uh, complex, much like Pentecostals do, you know. Um, there's the saved, and then there's the lowers. And Pentecostals do the same thing, too, by the way, who are typically Armenians. Um, you know, there's the saved, and then there's the super saved, the Holy Spirit filled awesome people who are like super christians they're better than everybody else and so it don't 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 mistake me for saying that calvinists are the only prideful people in the world they, not only that but i've actually seen calvinists who are not prideful so you know maybe take that into account when you say that all armenians uh, are um are uh what is it called um, heretics so anyways um and, and this would also mean that in a way god also preordained adam and eve's sin now, I believe that obviously God was in control, God had a plan on all these things, but I think it had more to do with giving people the opportunity because a choice can't really exist in a vacuum. So if God really wanted to give the choice, the ability to, to, to make a choice, he had to give an actual real option. Now, that's obviously going to be, gonna be uh, disagreed with by Calvinists. That's okay. Um, I disagree strongly with the idea that God would uh, preordain someone to sin. That he would cause them to sin, that he would make them sin, especially because God is holy and pure and good, and there is no evil in him. And I just find so many theological problems with that. Never in in any of the Bible, in, in any of the books of the Bible, does he say, "Oh yeah, by the way, um, this nation is going to sin, but that's okay because I wanted them to sin. I created them just so that they could sin, and then I laugh at them." Now, obviously, there's going to be somebody who quotes that verse. I know what you're talking about. Yes, I'm not ignoring it. I'm well, actually, I am ignoring it, but. Um, just for the sake of this lesson, because this is really a lesson. This is more of just, here's the thing. I posted something that was meant to be a joke on a, on a Christian thing, and I had all kinds of Calvinists getting all, <laughs> so, okay, let's, let's kind of remember to wind things in here a little bit. People are kind of a little bit on edge. I think you guys have all forgotten how to joke about things. Anyways, um, so why would God punish someone that he forced to sin? That, do, that doesn't make sense. Like, it, 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 it really hasn't caused some very, Problematic character traits about God. Um, problematic not for the sake of I had to change my belief, but um, for the sake of um, it doesn't seem to match up with what the Bible reveals about God. So then the Bible talks a lot about okay, all who all who come are welcome, you know, all who are weary, at least, except if you haven't actually been <laughs> been ordained. Oh, okay, or preordained. I mean, so like okay, well that's that's definitely something. Um, so here, here's here's the thing. I know I joked about this, and I know that I, I really wasn't serious of the whole thing, and and I get that. But here's the thing: we really shouldn't allow stupid things to cause fights and drama and division. I mean, geez, there's some things that Christians just shouldn't be arguing about anymore. We shouldn't be fighting about music. We shouldn't be fighting about Calvinism. Like, who cares? <laughs> who cares? <laughs> like. There's, you know, obviously there's there's um, false teachings and stuff that we need to look at. There's there's doctrinal errors that we need to correct. All of those, all great things, great things. You know, we don't all want to be Bill Johnsons, for instance. <laughs> but, but that doesn't mean that you have to go to the extreme of um, of acting all arrogant and prideful about stuff like. Oh, I'm definitely right. Yeah, and the person you're talking to thinks that they're definitely right. So it's like, okay, so you can only uh, move on with the relationship with one another if you agree perfectly on everything. I don't know. That just seems like not really a, a worthwhile spending of time. Here's what it comes down to. Um, love and seek the lost. That's, that's what it comes down to. Um, regardless of your view, regardless of anything, you don't need to be posting ugly things. You don't need to be uh, hateful to other people who don't agree and don't agree with you. You don't. You don't need any of that stuff. Just do what God told you to do, and leave it alone. Because once again, at the end of the day, 
If somebody is preordained or if they're not preordained, there's no one, no way who you could, no way that you could understand who is who. So I mean, there is something there. Um, but anyways, um, really just focus on loving and seeking the lost. Uh, that will that will definitely take up your time. And uh, anyways, ha have a great day and don't and stay out of stupid arguments. <laughs>